Good evening, everyone. Welcome to CBI Graduation. So blessed to have you here. Can we have you all stand as we worship the Lord? is this tonight let's let's give a big hand of applause for all of our band up here and for all of our graduates that are over here and what is so exciting 
is all of these warriors have been armed with the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God chapter by chapter and verse by verse through the entire Bible. Hallelujah. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men and faithful women who will be able to teach others. And on your program tonight, on the front of it, 37 different pastors have poured into this graduating class this year, and they're going around the world. And so it is with a tremendous joy that we all gather together tonight. Pastor BJ is going to come and have our opening prayer for us. It has been uh, such an awesome honor to see all the CBI students. And uh, I get a, the opportunity to teach them every Sunday night and Wednesday night. Uh, and when Gerald's gone on Sunday mornings, uh, whether they want to be there or not, it's awesome to have them. But all joking aside, it's an amazing thing to see what the Lord has done in and through your lives in this last year. You know, just seeing where you guys came from and where you are going to be going, it is just such an awesome honor and privilege to be able to be a part of your lives and having this small little part of, of this giant book that God is writing in your life. And so I'm just very blessed to be a part of all of that. But would you pray with me? Lord, we are so thankful for your goodness. Lord, we're so thankful that you have a plan for each and every one of us. And Lord, we're so thankful for these students that have answered that call, Lord, to serve in the ministry. Lord, there's no confusions in their life on what ministry looks like. They have been worked. They have studied. They have served practically. And Lord, they understand what they are getting involved in, and yet they still choose to serve you. And so, Lord, we pray that these students would go all over the world as the next generation, just reaching a lost world that so desperately needs to hear the gospel message, Lord God, and just to bring light to a very dark place. And so, Lord, we pray that you would just equip them, Lord, fill them full of your Holy Spirit, give them boldness and strength to stand in these times. And, Lord, we, just, we are so thankful, each and every one of us, whether it's parents, grandparents, um, aunts, uncles, ministry leaders, uh, mentors, whatever it is, to have had played this small part in their life. Lord, thank you for using all of us. We give you all the glory for anything good that they're going to accomplish, and we live to make your name famous. In Jesus' name, all of his people said, amen. amen. God bless you. And now we have opportunity to worship the Lord. One of the big parts of CBI is raising up worship leaders. So if you need a worship leader, you can kind of take your choice here tonight. But anyway, let's worship the Lord with him.
Isn't it awesome seeing the next generation? Is that fantastic? Again, thank you all very much. One of the things that makes CBI very special is its pastors who are teaching. So again, we have a list on the front of your program there, but we have a number of pastors who were able to be here tonight. We would like all those pastors to stand up that had a part of teaching at CBI. So. And again, we appreciate all of those. Also, 
for our own staff here, for David and Joel and Sherry, uh, we appreciate everyone very much as well. So. So we are so blessed tonight. Wade O'Neill and we've become friends. He's a pastor at Golden Springs Calvary Chapel. A wonderful blessing of God, a man of God. And so let's welcome Wade. Well, good evening. Good to see you all here, man. Glory to God for all that he's done. Amen. Amen. It's such a tactic of the enemy to be so overwhelmed with what we see going on in the world around us that we're blinded sometimes to people that God is raising up and what God is doing. And I say this to the parents in this room, grandparents in this room, what greater joy could you ever have than to know that your child has given their heart fully to the Lord and is committed to the cause of Christ. Amen. Well, in our brief time, in my brief time up here, I want to turn your guys' attention to a portion of scripture for those who are graduating this evening, probably has been the source of much consideration for you in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Um, Stephen, driving up here, I, you know, sometimes you wrestle on what the Lord would have you share, and the Holy Spirit impressed upon my heart to lead you to this, these, these verses in chapter 4 of 1 Timothy really because they're words to live by. Uh, William Carey has often been quoted uh, for exhorting people to expect great things from God and to attempt things, great things for God. That's what Timothy's doing in this book. Timothy was a man of God, a young man of God, who had a great task ahead of him. He was in a position where he was expecting great things from the Lord, but immediately opposition sets in. Such will be the case throughout the duration of your ministries. Opposition is a reality, but it's just more opportunity to experience the power and the victory of God in your life. To learn, to produce more brokenness in you so that God can fu more fully work through you, to pr produce more surrender. And the reality of Timothy's task was an impossibility in and of his own strength. To pastor the church of Ephesus in a wicked city, full of pagan idolatry, uh, much like the, the cities that we're called to minister in today in America, full of wickedness, full of debauchery. But God called Timothy to this task. And Paul is writing to encourage him. The task was great. Ephesus was wicked. He had to clear false doctrine, safeguard true worship, he was asked to develop mature leadership, all while being a young man. The call of God was evident before him. Paul believed in Timothy. But in these verses, in verses 12 through 16, Paul exhorts Timothy on the importance of maintaining his spiritual life. And I'll say this to those who are going out to do what God has called them to do. Ministry makes a very poor master. Don't lose focus on your own relationship with Jesus. Don't do ministry out of a place where you're burnt out and you're frustrated. The greatest pleasure you will always have in, in your own life is not what you do for the Lord, but what the Lord is actually doing in you first, within your own relationship with the Lord. And that's what Paul is exhorting Timothy to. He, he's encouraging him in these verses. In verse 12, he says, let no one despise your youth. Don't let anyone look down upon you, Timothy, because of how young you are. Timothy was between 30 and 40 at this time. He was sent to pastor a, a church, and no doubt there was the insecurity in him of his own age and his lack of, 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 of experience. But the truth was, it's God called him. God called him. God anointed him. He was God's man for the task. And we have an older man encouraging a younger man to stay faithful to that call. Just do what God has called you to do, Timothy. And he encourages, them in, in, he encourages Timothy, in spite of his youth, to be an example to the believers. 
I, I, I need you young people going into ministry to guard yourself with this mind. When you step into ministry, you forfeit the right to not care what people think about you. You as, as a person, as a servant of the Lord, are called to be an, an example to the believers. What it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a Christ follower, what it means to be a disciple, what it truly means to be a leader. But if you have your Bibles, look at what he's asking him to be an example in. First he says in word. In word. True leaders must always be conscious of the content of their speech, lest they offend others. James chapter 3 warns Bible teachers that we are subject to a greater judgment. He goes on to talk about the, the reality of the tongue, that with it we bless God and we curse others. He says, brethren, these things ought not to be so. One of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control, and as you live a Spirit-led life, your speech should be Spirit-led as well. And if that's something that you struggle with, we, we walk in transparency when we ask the Lord, Lord, help me to build up and not to tear down. But what Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy, the contents of what you speak matter. Take heed to yourself. He says, be an example in word, but also be an example in conduct and how you live your life. Live your life in a way that brings glory and honor to the Lord. Live worthy of your calling. In word, in conduct, and then notice, in love. In love. You cannot love people apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot have proper conduct apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot have proper speech apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. Because ministry is difficult because people are difficult. And in and of ourselves, we can't love them effectively. We need the eyes of the Lord to see them. We need the heart of the Lord to love them. That the Lord would fill our hearts with compassion. So what Timothy must do to love people effectively and fervently is to maintain his own heart before the Lord. The Bible says this, to keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. In ministry, you can't love others unless you are aware of your own insufficiencies, your own inadequacies, and the reality of the love of Jesus for you. That's what Paul's exhorting Timothy to. But he also says in faith, or better translated, in faithfulness. Be a faithful pastor, Timothy. Be faithful to do the difficult things. Let people see your faithfulness unto the Lord. Be an example of of faithfulness. That's what we have in Paul. That's what we have in the previous generation that's gone before us, is faithfulness. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years in ministry. Some in this room, the example of faithfulness. You've heard it been said, it's not about how you start, but about how you finish. I would encourage you here today, have a long-term perspective in ministry. It's not about how high you can jump, but how straight you can walk. You want to be able to say, I, I finished my course. It's about walking faithfully. And through those years, the, mold will, the Lord will mold you and shape you. He'll break you. He'll cause you to be flexible. And in that, the Lord will call you to raise up the next generation. But Paul, Timothy could be faithful because of his example of faithfulness in his own pastor, in Paul. He had an example, and what Paul is asking him to do is carry on this baton, Timothy. And he says, in purity, have a pure heart, let your life be pure. He also says, in spirit, in verse 12. And in your attitude should be pleasing to the Lord. He says in verse 13, he says, till I come, give attention to reading to exhortation, and to doctrine. There's a lot of things in this world that we can give our attention to. But what Paul is calling Timothy to is to be singular in focus. A true servant of the Lord must not live a duplicit life. 
We cannot be people of duplicity, especially in the world, world we're living in today. He's asking him to be singular in his focus. Give attention to these things, to reading, to your own devotional life. Build yourself up in your own faith. That's the most important call. Pay heed to your devotional life. I remember hearing a, a Pastor Joe Foch, many of you know him, exhort young pastors, if you could give one... A word to young pastors, what would it be? And he thought and he said, give God the mornings. Give God the first fruit of your morning. Spend time with him. Guard that time with him. Give attention to your reading, to your devotional life. Always be in the word. That was the word of the Lord to Joshua. Meditate in it day and night and then you will have good success. Be singular in this focus. He says to exhortation as well, though, don't be negligent to exhort those who need exhortation. Be willing to encourage those who need encouragement, but also to reprove those who need reproving. But he also says to doctrine. Something, the most important thing in all the world has been entrusted to you during your time here at CBI. It is the truth of the word of God. It is doctrine. It is the only thing that has the power to change and transform your life and the lives of those you come in contact with. Hold it dear. And don't let anything distract you from it. Verse 14, he says, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. He's reminding Timothy of the promise that the Lord had given him. The prophetic word. Don't neglect the gift, Timothy. Don't neglect the calling. Why would Timothy neglect the calling? Because of the difficulty of the task and the reality of discouragement. Know this when you go out in to serve the Lord. That discouragement is demonic. And the enemy seeks to discourage. There are, there are other times in 2 Timothy where Tim, Paul had to encourage Timothy to to fan the flame of desire in his life, to stir up the gift, Timothy. Don't allow your discouragement to, to lay your gift aside. Use it and be encouraged because God's called you. Don't forget the promises that the Lord has given you. Don't forget the prophetic word because those will test you. Remember Joseph. In Psalm 105, it says that Joseph, while he was in prison, he was tested by the word of the Lord. I believe there's many in this room here tonight, students or not, who have been given a promise of God, and because of the lack of fulfillment of it, you've fallen into discouragement. If I can encourage you this evening, pick up the promise of God. Walk in faith and believe it. Because in God's time and in God's ways, through God's resources, He will be faithful to fulfill it. But you must not be discouraged. Plow faithfully. Keep your hand to the plow. And don't look back says in verse 15, meditate on these things. I want to stop here for a minute. What things? Don't let anyone despise your youth. Be mindful of the contents of your speech, of the conduct of your life, of the importance of loving people, of having a good attitude in ministry, of your faithfulness, of the purity of your life. Continue to give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, don't forget the prophetic word that's been given to you. Meditate on these things. Notice the simplicity of that. The great war that the enemy wages daily is for your mind. The content of the mind of the minister is oftentimes what makes it or breaks it for you and I in ministry. And there are so many distractions in this world. God doesn't need the entrapments of this world to fulfill your calling. God does not need the resources of this world to use your life. He needs a mind that is wholly devoted to him. Guard your mind. How do you guard your mind? You, you guard your eyes. You guard your ears. You realize that this world and the pull of it is always fighting for the attention of your mind. Meditate. 
Fill your mind with the truth of God's word. Meditate on these things. Give your mind to the importance of your calling. Meditate on these things. He says this. I want you to underline this. Take this home. Dwell on this. Live by this. Give yourself entirely to them. Maximum effort. Entirely to your calling. No reservations. Completely poured out for the cause of Christ. That's a convicting word. Because we can fall into the danger of giving our attention and our desires to other things. He says to give yourself entirely to your calling. There will be temptations in this world to derail you from the path that God has you on. There will be temptations in this world, doors that seem as if they're of God, but they're of the enemy, to derail you from the path that the Lord has you on. You give yourself entirely to your calling. Don't be distracted. Don't be discouraged. And allow the Lord to fulfill His will in your life, His way, as you live this life of surrender. We all know the conditions of discipleship. We all know, Matthew 16, 24, that the Lord has called us to deny ourselves, to relinquish the rights of our life to Him, to take up the cross, that is to accept the suffering that He allows, and to follow Him, to live a life of long obedience in the same direction. That's what Paul is asking of Timothy. Give yourself entirely to your calling, Timothy. Why? That your progress may be evident to all. You don't need to be concerned about the breadth of your ministry. What do I mean by that? Ministry is not about how high you go, but how low you get. That sounds cliche, but it's so true. It's about humility. You take care of the depth of, your, the depth of your relationship with God, and the Lord will take care of the breadth of your sphere of your influence in ministry, because after all, it's not really about that. It's about being a servant of the Lord. And we are unprofitable servants. And he's counted us faithful and worthy to serve him in the ministry. Paul would say that to Timothy, that God found him faithful, and he put him in the ministry. And if God has put you in the ministry, it's not your business to take yourself out. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how discouraged you get, you serve the Lord. You give Him your all. You give Him your entire life. You commit Him to Him with all of your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. You love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your soul, all your strength, and all of your mind. You go deep in your relationship with the Lord and let the Lord use you how he desires. And in closing, he says this, take heed to yourself. There's a lot of things that that a, a pastor must take heed to. The condition of the flock, the condition of the leadership, the condition of the, the resources and the facilities, but primarily the pastor, the servant of the Lord, must take heed to himself. Paul is echo- echoing the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospels to the disciples on many occasions. In the Olivet Discourse, when he was telling them what the end, of the, the end times are going to look like, he said, Take heed to yourself, lest your heart be weighed down by carousing and drunkenness, and the cares of this world overtake you. Take heed to yourself. Paul would tell the, the leaders on the beach of Miletus in, or excuse me, on the beach of Ephesus in, in Acts, He said, take heed to yourself and to the ministry in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. There's this constant exhortation to take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Doctrine must be your passion. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourselves and those who hear you. You'll save yourself and both those who who hear you. And I'll close with this. Your diligence in these things that Paul puts puts before us in 1 Timothy 4, verses 12 through 16, 
Your diligence in these things will result in maximum impact. It's not about being great. It's not about what you can do. God has no superstars. He has servants. It's about loving Jesus. It's about taking your calling seriously. It's about serving him faithfully. And it's about loving him and loving his people. Amen? Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much. Lord, I pray over every life in this room. I pray your spirit be upon us, Lord. I pray for those you have spoken here, this, spoken to here this evening that you would bless. Lord, I pray for the life of every student here, those graduating and those who are still attending. Lord, that they would make their call and election sure, Lord. That you build them up, Lord. That you baptize us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have this awesome opportunity. We've got 46 graduates this evening. So God has done an incredible work. Before we get to the presentation of the graduates, we have something fun. Um, these two young men have written um, an original song, and uh, we're going to play a slideshow prepared by the graduates um, for this very night. And so let's roll the slideshow. All right, so we wrote a song um, just for all the graduates. And it's a funny story. We were actually writing this song. Um, it was a Barnabas night. And I was writing a song for all the second semesters as an encouragement. And uh, I have my friend Ethan, uh, and we just wrote a song for them. So this is the song we wrote for them. Chuck tracks, there's so much that we learned. We've had highs and we've had lows, but through it, God has shown the strength of His word. My heart has been changed. Oh, I'm not the same. God changed me through so many Can't lie, I'm gonna miss some familiar faces. 
faces With all these memories I know you'll always be Much more than just my friends But my CBI family <laughs> God, I just gotta say I'll thank you for this place And all that you've done single day you always stay the same the journey's just begun my heart has been changed oh I'm not the same God's changed me through so many things the trials that I've raised I'm so glad I came <laughs> so many happy times Yeah, you know I can't lie I'm gonna miss some familiar faces With all these memories I know you'll always be Oh, what a wonderful experience So many happy times Yeah, you know I can't lie <laughs> With all these memories, I know you'll always be much more than just my friends, but my CBI family. Oh, sweet. Praise the Lord. Man, uh, again, my, my name is Joel. I'm the dean of students here at the school, and uh, I've had the privilege to be able to walk with these students uh, over the last 10 months, and uh, it's been such a privilege and such an honor uh, to be able to be here and, um, and to, to begin and to announce the presentation of our graduates. And uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll get started going and listen off everybody's names, and, and we'll go ahead and start with our first graduate, Nicholas Balladoni. I'm from Seattle, Washington. I'm going to St. Paul, Minnesota. See you guys later. Alisa Baranova. Okay. Hello, 
love you. Whoever said that? Okay, it's not coming out. Hi, I'm Alicia. I'm from Vladimir, Russia, and I think I'm going to the Republic of Georgia. <laughs> Aaron Barrios. I'm Aaron Barrios from Tooele, Utah, and I will be staying here to intern. Hallelujah. Sadie Bromby. I'm Sadie Bromby, and I'm going home to Mission Viejo to finish my degree and serve at my church. Zane Butler. I'm Zane Butler, and my wife Elena Butler couldn't be here, but we are from Kansas, and we are going to Washington. Josiah Demeray. Hey guys, I'm Josiah. I've been here my whole life, and I'm gonna stay here for a little bit longer. <laughs> Joy Dring. Drink. I'm from Burley, Idaho, and I'm going to be interning here at Joshua Springs. Abigail and Michael Egger. Hi guys, I'm Michael, and this is my wife Abby, and we're from Vancouver, Washington. And we're going back home to serve full time in our home church, Simple Faith Garbage Chapel. Thank you, Thank you guys. Francis Ferro. Hello, I'm Francis Ferro. I'm from Santa Rosa, California, and I'm going wherever the Lord wills. <laughs> Jacob Garber. Everybody. I'm Jacob Garber. I'm from Corona, California, and I'll be going back to finish my uh, degree in mechanical engineering and in interning at my church. Micah Gershoni.
Shalom. My, <laughs> my name is Micah Gershoni. I'm going back to my hometown of Placerville to work on staff of my church. Thank you. Geneva Gonzalez. Geneva Gonzalez, and I'm from Santa Maria, California, and I'm still praying about where I'm going. <laughs> Drake Heatwall. Too, random stranger. <laughs> My name is Drake Hewell. I'm from Mount Solon, Virginia, and I'm serving at Calvary Chapel Hemet under Gary Johnson. <laughs> Victoria Jones. Jones and I'm going to CBI Israel and before I leave I wanted to leave with a Bible verse. It's 1 Timothy 6 verse 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Thank you. Evan Klein. Oh, what? Hi, I'm Evan Klein. I'm from Utah, Heber City. I'm going to be going to uh, Calvary Chapel Gold Country. I don't know where it is, but it's cool. <laughs> Jordan Laird. My name's Jordan Laird, and my wife and I are staying here to do counseling for Marines full-time ministry. Beth Saina Leaf. and after CBL I'll be going to Mexico for school missions. Thank you. Samuel Lumen. Hello, my name is uh, Samuel Lumen. I'm from Tooele, Utah. Yeah! And CBI sends out their best, so I will be staying right here. <laughs> Jacob Meza. I'm uh, 
Jacob Meza from Orange County, California. And I'll be going to school missions in Mexico, Rosarito, then Buell, Idaho. Taylor Munsinger. I'm from Castle Rock, Colorado, and I'll be going back to my home church to intern there for a year. Yay! Hannah Orozco. I am from Brandon, Florida, and I will be staying here interning a little bit, and then I'm off to CBI Uganda! Nathan Parker. Hello, I'm Nathan Parker. I am from Hemet, California, and I will be serving at my home church in Hemet with Drake Heat Wool. Brenna Ferraro. Praro, and I, I'm from Corona, California, and I will be going back home to pursue per, to get my degree of teaching slash special education and interning at Crossroads Christian Church. Ivan Ramos. Hi guys, um, I'm Ivan, which is basically Ivan, but pronounced in Spanish. I'm from Me Mexico, or Mexico, uh, from Monterrey, Monterrey, <laughs> and I'll be going uh, back home for like a month, and then I'm going to be interning at CBI Peru. Thank you. Remington Righteous. Hey everybody, I'm Remington. I'm from Helena, Montana, and I'm headed to CBI Israel. Peace! Quinn Richardson. My name is Quinn Richardson. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm going back to my home church, Calvary Chapel Alpharetta, to help with the youth ministry. Rebecca Rose. I'm from Gooding, Idaho, and I'm going to be interning here for the summer and then going to CBI Israel. Caleb Sanchez.
Hi guys, my name's Caleb Sanchez. I'm from Mentone, California. No one knows where that's at. Uh, but I'm going to Israel and then um, Mexico for school admissions. Hannah Share. I'm Hannah Scherer, I'm from Buell, Idaho, and I'm going back to Buell, Idaho, to Buell Bible Church to teach preschool. Ethan Spees. I'm Ethan Spees. I'm from Corona, California, and I'll be returning home to serve at my church and go to school. God bless you. Sydney Stock. I'm from Redondo Beach, California, and I'll be staying here and interning at JS. <laughs> Carissa Torgerson. Torgerson, I'm from Yucca Valley, and they can't get rid of me, so I'm staying. Larissa Wiley. I'm from Centralia, Washington, and I'm going to CBI Israel. Emma and Christian Rutledge. I'm Christian Rutledge. This is my wife of 15 days, Emma Rutledge. Yeah. Uh, we're from St. Clinton, California, and we're going back to work full time at Calvary South OC. Yeah. <laughs> JJ Brock. My name is JJ Brock, um, and I'm from Yucca Valley, California, and I'm staying in Yucca Valley, California. Mackenzie Goss. Kenzie Gauz, and I'm from Playa de Tijuana, Mexico. Um, I'm going to take a nap after this. Um, just kidding, there's no time, but um, I'm going to be here for a little bit and see where the Lord leads. Um, I think that's all I was supposed to say. Happy birthday, Dad! I love you! Gabrielle and Noah Gessiman. Well, 
Well, hello, my name is Noah Gessiman, and this is my wife, Gabrielle Gessiman, and I'm from Yucca Valley, California. I'm from North Carolina, and we're going to be staying here, finishing our internship, and then praying about where the Lord takes us next. Nathaniel Haichu. How's it going? My name's Nate. Um, I finished the program in December, and I had the honor of going over to Kauai and just being a part of a new CBI that they're starting up over there. We just finished our first semester, and so I'm just going to be going back there to prepare for our second. Thanks, guys. Preston Jenkins. I'm Preston, I'm from 29 Palms, California, and I will be going to Gooding Springs Calvary Chapel out in Idaho. Avery McKee. and then I'm going to get married and then move to where my soon-to-be husband is in Salmon, Idaho. That's it. Avery Middleton. Middleton, and I'm originally from Folsom, California, but I currently live in Bakersfield with my family, and I'm studying at Calvary Chapel University online for a bachelor's in biblical studies and a certificate in biblical counseling. So. And our last graduate of the evening, Alexandra Miller. from Hollywood, Florida, but I'm going to be going to uh, the Calvary Chapel in St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> and with that, we'll go ahead and we'll pray and we'll have a closing song. Well, dear Jesus, we come to you right now. God, thanking you so much, Lord, for these graduates and just the, the callings that you have on each one of them individually. Lord, we pray, God, that, that you would continue to strengthen them. Lord, that you would just fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, giving them wisdom. Lord, filling them with joy and peace. And, and more than anything else, your love, God, for you and the people around them. God, strengthen them as they're sent out. Lord, strengthen them. Lord, as they go and minister to people who you've already prepared for them beforehand. God, and we pray, Lord, that, that you would just continue, Lord, to, to bless their, their relationship with you, Lord. God, we thank you and we praise you for them. In your name we all pray, amen.
this opportunity. I get to do this once a year and I wouldn't miss it for the world, but we're going to commission these, these young men and women and send them out to serve the Lord. You don't have to bear with me, I lost my voice this morning. I speak now for the faculty and staff of Calvary Bible Institute, for the pastors of Joshua Springs Calvary Chapel, for the volunteers who came and cooked meals and painted rooms and, and uh, gave you meals and brought you into their homes. We're sending you out. From 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist. And graduates, 2023, fulfill your ministry. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. And it's because of your Holy Spirit and because of your redemption on the cross that we are standing here today. We're humbled in your presence, Lord God. And we know that unless you build this house, Lord God, we labor in vain. Unless you build these students' lives, these graduates' lives, we labor in vain, Lord God. We pray that your call and anointing would be sure. Lord God, we pray that your voice would be evident in their lives, Lord God. We pray that you would baptize them in your Holy Spirit and send them out according to your will, Lord God. And we pray that these 46 graduates would turn this world upside down. We love you and we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, how exciting is it to see the next generation? Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. It's so awesome to see. And again, we do want to invite everyone tomorrow for the Next Generation Conference. One of our graduates is speaking. We also have Wade speaking. So we invite you. That starts at 9 o'clock in the morning. But now... May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless.